PED using athletes have long noticed that growth hormone use appears to influence their thyroid function. In this video, I'm going to tell you how exactly that happens. But before I do, please subscribe to this channel, like the video if you haven't already, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. In this video, I'm going to review the research of growth hormone treatment on healthy adults, on growth hormone deficient children, and on growth hormone deficient adults, seeing how growth hormone treatment affects thyroid function. Finally, we'll speculate a little bit on the molecular mechanisms that may be at play. As early as 1988, it was shown that growth hormone treatment in healthy adults decreased serum T4, increased serum T3, markedly inhibited TSH, and had no effect on reverse T3. Studies on children with growth hormone deficiency have yielded mixed results. Some studies indicate that growth hormone treatment on growth hormone deficient children can markedly inhibit thyroid function to the degree that the inhibition of the thyroid function limits their linear growth, meaning their ability to grow taller. Other studies, however, show that uh, thyroid function after growth hormone treatment in growth hormone deficient children, the thyroid function returns back to normal between 6 to 12 months after initiating the treatment or at least in the second year of treatment, meaning that thyroid replacement therapy was not necessary for the children. Now, the largest studies on growth hormone deficient adults show slightly different effects on the thyroid values. In particular, one of the largest studies, including 66 GH deficient adults, showed a decrease in serum T4, an increase in reverse T3, but no effect on T3 or TSH, which is a little bit different than we saw on, not, on adults that were not growth hormone deficient. Interestingly, in this study, 47% of formerly euthyroid people, which means people that had normal thyroid function, ended up with hypothyroidism, which is a very large effect, especially considering that these were GH deficient adults. Interestingly, authors speculate that discrepancies in these early studies on GH deficient adults may be due to their use of cadaver GH, which may have been contaminated with actual TSH. So this may be the reason for the difference in those values. A second larger study confirmed those initial findings on GH deficient adults given GH treatment. Um, in particular, the authors concluded that not only was uh, hypothyroidism an effect that was uh, resulting from the GH treatment, but it was so significant that it attenuated the subjective benefits of having low dose growth hormone treatment for adults with GH deficiency, meaning that the effects of GH on subjective well being for the adults was modulated by GH's inhibition of thyroid function. And when thyroid replacement therapy was initiated, the adults were able to get the benefits from the GH treatment. Now, the authors also speculated that they, they think that the GH doesn't have an actual effect on harming thyroid function, but rather they think that it unmasks people who already had issues with their thyroid function, meaning it, it were, those people already had hypothyroidism that was not clear, and when the GH treatment was added, the hypothyroidism became evident in their biomarkers. I don't know how much I agree with that. It seems to me that the majority of the, of the papers that I've seen and the experience I've seen from people I've known and myself indicate that it really does seem to have a direct effect on thyroid function. So let's discuss where that may come from. First of all, it seems that GH treatment increases peripheral deordination of T4 to T3, which may explain the change in the ratio of T4 to T3 that we see consistently across studies of growth hormone treatment. Second, growth hormone treatment appears to inhibit TSH. As you guys will remember from earlier videos, TSH is actually the signal for the thyroid to grow. When TSH is very elevated, it can produce thyroid cancers, but at low levels, it keeps the thyroid functioning. When people add growth hormone treatment, the TSH actually reduces, which is interesting. This could be via, via various mechanisms, and it may be that growth hormone is actually indirectly growing the thyroid anyway. However, the reason that TSH appears to decline, I believe, and other authors have speculated, is because of what's called somatostatin. Somatostatin is produced in the body as a response to GH, it's sort of the inhibitory function, and it may inhibit the synthesis of TSH as well. Finally, it's really unclear whether it is GH or IGF-1 that modulates this effect on the thyroid. Anyway guys, to summarize, basically, when you add growth hormone treatment to your regimen as a healthy adult, what will most likely happen is that your T4 levels will decrease, your T3 levels may increase, and your TSH levels may decline. Um, whether this is dangerous for thyroid function, other than actually being hypothyroidal, which is obviously not good for your health or not good for your subjective well-being. By the way, guys, I don't know if you, you've ever heard of this before, but 
T3 has actually been used, Cytomel has been used as a treatment for a treatment resistant depression before. So it has effects on the psychology as well and all that. But basically what I'm wondering personally is whether this effect on the thyroid may cause pathologies of the thyroid that may be malignant. Because I remember when Dallas McCarver passed away, God rest his soul, he had thyroid cancer. And we've also seen another guy in the industry who's still alive who also developed thyroid cancer who was notorious for his growth hormone use. So my curiosity is, is the growth hormone growing the thyroid separately or is the lack of TSH causing some pathology of malignancy in the thyroid eventually? So personally, I don't know if I was, if I was taking growth hormone treatment, would I want to replace thyroid function aside from the subjective benefits psychologically and for my physical well-being and so on? I think p potentially so. If the growth hormone is actually growing the thyroid, if I have any kind of TSH level in addition to it, it will grow further. So if I replace thyroid hormone, I may have less of a, of a stimulus on the thyroid to grow that may be causing, causing that malignancy. This is, of course, just speculation. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful for you and informative. Please spread the word about how GH affects thyroid function, and I hope to see you again next time.